Hey guys, so I am back again. Um, I think I'm gonna make some kind of record here for making two videos in a week. Um, and I actually have a third video, but I don't know if I'm gonna release it or not. I don't think I'm going to. I'm gonna do it over again. Um, but today's video, I want to talk about insecurities. So I've been gone for really kind of a long time, as you guys have known. Um, I have been working on so many different things, trans related, not trans related, life related, just trying to figure out the direction I need to go in my life because I graduated school a year ago um, and I'm just kind of trying to find my path and I've been working really, really hard at that. Um, and I've had a lot of ups and I've had a lot of crazy downs that have been really, really hard. Um, and this is past year 2016 has not been the best of years for me um so i want to make a video today that talks about um insecurities and especially insecurities which i face being a trans woman um i have so many insecurities in my life and it's ridiculous because even though if you see me on the street or you see me on these videos or anywhere, you may not think those insecurities should even be relevant in my life, um, but they are and they cause me some major harm. So I wanna talk about those insecurities today and I want to say them to try to help myself and help me get over it and just accept these insecurities. I also want to name some of these insecurities to try to help some of you guys name your insecurities and try to own them and make them your own. Um, this is something that I, a lot of the stuff is trans related and it is body related and it's something that I have really struggled with, but I'm really working hard on getting over. So here are a couple insecurities I really struggle with and I really hope they do help you guys. So. As a trans person, one of the biggest insecurities you can have, or one of the, like the major reasons why anyone transitions, obviously, is because of body dysphoria, and I have dysphoria too. Um, but one thing is, I get really confused. Um, I get confused as to what is my body dysphoria, so what am I dysphoric about, and then what are things that I want to change on the basis of societal expectations on me. Um, and these are something that I really struggle with. So one big thing that I struggle with is actually my face. Um, and I know like I'm a smart person and I do a really good job at putting myself in other people's shoes and taking a step back and looking at things from a real, um, real view, I guess, real viewpoint. But some of these things I struggle with so bad. For example, I haven't been clocked for three years, meaning no one's ever known I've been trans until I tell them I'm trans. But I still have major issues with my face. Um, I still look in the mirror and it, it, it goes by week, it's really weird. But I'll look in the mirror and I'll see a boy. And it's so, and it hurts and it breaks my heart. And then other days I look in the mirror and I just see a girl, um, which is really weird. but. It's really hard for me to look in the mirror and not see that reflection back. Um, especially it's like when it's late at night, I'm on Snapchat and I take weird angles. Like that is when I see myself as a boy and it just, it breaks my heart and I'm so insecure about it. So a couple of things I am insecure about that I do try to own, but it's really difficult for me is my jaw. Cause my jaw is very defined and very masculine. Um, a couple other things is like my side profile, my nose, and I know a lot of you are going to be like, what the hell, but it's stuff that I really do struggle with. Um, a couple other things is my brow. That's why I always wear glasses. I've started wearing contacts, but like my brow bone is pretty prominent and it really does bother me. Um, another thing that really bothers me, and you guys are so lucky you're getting this video, is my hairline. Now, one of the T blockers I'm on is finasteride, and one of the side effects of finasteride is hair growth. So I have had some hair growth, but I'm still very self-conscious of my hairline, and I never wear my hair like this. I always wear bangs covering, if you guys haven't noticed, because I'm very self-conscious of my masculine hairline. 
Um, and I went, when I first started transitioning, I went and saw, or I saw this uh, FFS surgeon talk and he talked about the different features on a face that makes it masculine or feminine. And just if you look at those features, you may not just think of them as masculine or feminine, feminine but your body nat or your mind naturally associates those with femininity and masculinity. And one thing is the brow, you know, the brow is very prominent in men, not so much women. And the hairline, women's hairlines are much further down, stuff like that. Men's are much more receded. And it's just little things like that I picked up on. And it, it, I'm very self-conscious about those things and I hate it so much. So it's, I never wear my hair like this. Like, to be honest, if I go out in public, I'm not going out like this. I'm gonna put my hair down and put my bangs over my forehead because I'm very self-conscious of it. Um, and that's something that I just am super insecure about. Another thing is when it comes to my body. So when it comes to my boobs, they're like, they're there, but they're not like, I don't know. I never got like a second opinion on them because they're just natural right now. And I don't know if, to me, they look like boobs sometimes, but then the other times they just look like a male's chest. They're not big at all. So I like them in the fact that I'm a very active person and I am very sporty. So when I do sports and stuff, they like don't get in the way. That's one thing I like because I am very active and I wouldn't like to have a big chest flopping around when I'm being active. I like having smaller boobs for that purpose. But when I do look in the mirror, I do get self-conscious. And this is where I don't know if it's society or my dysphoria looking at, in the mirror. And I don't know if it would help me to get breast implants, if that would help my self-image, or if that's just something society puts on me. And this is just something that I need to like tangle out because it's really interwoven in me. A lot of things that are wrong with my appearance. And I don't know if it's societal or dysphoria. And it's just something that I definitely need to figure out. Um, another thing is my downstairs. So actually I am having a consultation next month with um, a doctor for SRS. I am excited about that, but I am still super nervous because I made a couple of videos talking about how nervous I am about SRS and the reasons why, and I'm still nervous about those issues. And it's just like, for me, I struggle with my identity and accepting my identity and is this the right path for me? Um, because I really don't know. And I look back and I think of myself living as a boy and that's absolutely terrifying for me. And I wouldn't want to do it in the world, but at the other same time, I still think to myself, am I really a girl? Is this transition the right answer for me? So. And it's something that I've been working on and I've been working on for the last year. Like, is this transition right for me? Because I've been thinking about detransitioning, not detrans or keep on transitioning, going through SRS. And it's like, I don't know what I want. And it's really hard for me because I feel like so many people in this world, it's so evident that gender is one of the most basic things I think in the world that people can identify with what gender they are. Right? And it's something that is so complex and so hard for me to understand. It's which am I? And it's frustrating and like I have a good idea, but it's still like lingering in the back of my mind. Is this the right decision? Um, so that's something that is very interesting and a big insecurity of mine. And I just, that's the one thing I wish, I guess, mostly is that I would just be set in stone within my gender and I know exactly what I'm going, who exactly I am um, and what gender I am and I'm okay with that and I can move on and use that mental energy elsewhere and I think it'd be so much more productive and I'm hoping that with surgery and getting these stuff, this stuff done that I can eventually move to that point where I can just accept who I am and not worry about gender and just move on. But Gender has played a big role in my life and has taken a lot of mental effort and a lot of struggle and a lot of pain in my life to figure out who I actually am. And I'm still struggling with that today and that's something I'm still working on. And it's just, it's always been there and it's tangled in me and I have to untangle it, but it's been a lifelong of tangles. So 
it's something that's really hard to untangle short and quickly, especially even in the last year, it's been really hard to untangle, last three, four years. So since I struggle with this, my identity, my body image, whenever I go out in public, um, like I said, I've passed and I haven't been clocked for three, three-ish years, like no one's ever known I'm trans. But I still, every time I go in public, I think to myself, do they know I'm trans? Do they know I'm trans? Like trans goes through my mind like probably 3,000 times in a day. And it's just over and over and over and over. And it gets physically exhausting, physically and emotionally. And when I am in public, it's always on my mind. Do they know I'm trans? Should I tell them I'm trans? Am I trans? Like it's so annoying. And it, because of that, it really affects my relationships with people because it really affects my ability to open up and actually be okay with talking to someone and letting them, like, believing that they'll like me for who I am. Um, but it's just, it's, I don't know, being trans has really, it's not being trans, it's the mental fight of trans in my, like, it's really confusing. But it's really difficult for me to make relationships, um, friendships, significant others you know like I've been single for a really long time and I'm like I've been known for only being single and I want to be with someone so bad but it's so hard for me because I feel like I can't even figure out myself how am I supposed to figure out time for another person and I just want to be with someone but on the other hand I'm also too ashamed to be with anyone else because I'm too ashamed with, of my body to be with someone else and if I was with someone else I'd be really awkward with using my body with that other person so I just have found it easier to not be with a person for a long time but that has started to change I really want to be with someone it doesn't matter about my body I just want to be with someone for emotional support but it's just a mountain of things that have been piling up and piling up and I need to learn to bulldoze those down but it's a lifelong pile of shit I guess and it's so hard to pull those down and I just struggling to get over it um, and I want to get over it and I've been going at it piece by piece but you go up and then you fall back down um, and you climb a little bit higher and you fall back down to the bottom and it's really frustrating and it's really hard and it's brought on by a lot of different insecurities of mine so let me know what you guys think of this video. Um, it did get kind of real. I did go into my deepest, darkest issues, I guess. Um, I just skimmed the surface. Remember, I, I've been like talking about this stuff in therapy for like a year. So it goes way much more complex than that. But that's just like some of the bullet points that I've talked about this past year. And I know I'm not the only one that struggles with this stuff. Um, and I definitely want to know that I want you guys to know that I'm here um, that and I struggle through the same things as you do um, there's many people that struggle through the same things as you do as I do um, and it's really really hard and it is a battle and it's not just an easy trip up the mountain it's constantly getting up falling back down constantly getting up falling back down falling way down and making big gains and it's really really exhausting um but i really am optimistic hopefully <laughs> just kidding yes i am optimistic about moving forward into the future and i do believe that one day i will find the person who i want to be i hope that person is within the next year i find it because it's getting really exhausting but I am optimistic that I will find that person who I want to be and I won't have to be worried about these insecurities and I'll more own these insecurities rather than have them be a constant nuisance within my life. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I'm so sorry. I've noticed I have the sun up over here um, and I have red curtains so I noticed that I'm fading in and out from green to red. I'm really sorry about that guys, um, natural lighting I guess. So other than that, thank you guys so much for watching and you have a great rest of your day.